Welcome back to Animation Teacher. Today we're going to be looking at hierarchies. Now I'm only going to show you how the node view works for this video. I'm just going to call this hierarchies. Now regardless of whether or not you have artwork, hierarchies will basically look the same throughout. So I'm going to start here by showing you what a character hierarchy might look like. The first thing we want to do is actually check our preferences before we start building our hierarchies, hierarchies to ensure everything is properly set. The main important thing in creating a hierarchy is to ensure that your default separate position for pegs is set on as well, um, in order to build art, just make sure your support overlay underlay arts is also on. Okay. So, what I like to do first is I like to create a bunch of drawing symbols. To create drawing symbols, you hit Control R and you can add this drawing symbol here. So I'm going to start uh, by building a basic hierarchy of uh, a character. So I'm going to first start with the upper torso. I'm going to hit add and it'll appear down here. I'm going to go to lower torso, add Oops, I add and close. Control R again to bring up this dialog box. I'm going to add a close bicep. Far bicep. Close forearm. Far, forearm, close hand, oops, far hand, close leg, oops, let's bring that back. Again, control R. Far leg. Close feet. If you just hit enter, you can just add and keep going. Far feet. Um, do a neck. Do a head, face. I'll do. Um, I'm just gonna omit the left eye, right eye, uh, left eyebrow, right, um, eyebrows, lips, and everything. I'm just gonna put um, face for now. Uh, I'm treating it as a just the drawing, but you can break it up later on. Hair underlay, hair overlay. Okay, so we have everything here. It's all kind of stacked in front of each other here. So what you can do is you can select all of them and you can hit this button here to organize node view. Hit OK. Now everything is going to be kind of organized. Usually they shoot the right or display port all the way over there. Okay, so this is these are all the pieces that I have. Okay, I'm just gonna ditch this drawing here. 
Here's my lower torso. Uh, all right, so now that I have all my drawings, we're going to select them. Control Shift P. We're gonna highlight them all again. And hit Control P to create a master peg. And highlight them all again and hit Control Shift G to create a group. So this will be your character group. Um, I'm just gonna label it character build and you can connect it to the main composite. Now of course you can do all that manually if you've already have a composite but this just makes it e way easier. So I'm just gonna reorganize my timeline here or my node view here and I'd like to point out a couple of things in this node view. Every time you go into just bring this up here. Every time you go into a grouping, you hit this right arrow key. And once you're inside, you'll see where you are here, character build. Now, when you go inside a grouping, you'll see something called a multiport in and a multiport out. These are your entrance doors and exit doors into the group. Between the two, you'll see a composite and hopefully a master peg. Just gonna label this character master. P is for peg. And down here is the composite. Now the composite is currently set to a bitmap pass-through mode here, or bitmap mode. What we want it to set to is pass-through. Basically, the differences between a bitmap and a pass-through, which is what we normally use, is in a pass-through, each one of these symbols uh, will actually carry its own independent attributes. Whereas if you set it to bitmap, anything attached to it gets completely flattened and treated as a single solitary symbol. So for example, if you had if you had to bring the forearm in front of everything in the Z depth here, if I punch that up, point, point 0.001, it basically forces everything attached to that composite to go to point 0.001. Now it's not going to hold that attribute if you click on the individual pegs, but it will still treat everything uh, as a whole. And similarly, if you have a shadow um, where you want everything to be blended together, this is actually when you would use a bitmap composite. But for our, for our instances, to ensure that we can utilize the z-depth properties of each symbol, we're going to use pass-through. Next thing is all the hierarchies go from left to right. Basically, anything you see on the left will be on top, anything on the right will be at the bottom. Therefore, we have to reorganize this so that everything attached on the left is at the top. So, straight off the bat, I know that my hair overlay will likely be on top of everything. Now, just moving it over will not make it visible on top. You'll actually have to change the connection point at the bottom of the composite. So I'm just going to shift that over to the left as well. Uh, I just realized this says Hari. Let me just fix that real quick to hair. Okay, the next piece is the face. I'm going to shift that over down here as well. And just to create space, I'm just going to shift everything over here. Okay, and the next piece will be the head base.
and then the hair underlay. And then the neck. The upper torso. And I'm going to look for there's the lower torso. Okay, now I actually have to put the arm, the close arm, in front of the upper torso. So I'm going to grab my close bicep. my close forearm and my close hand and I'll put it to the left of the upper torso and lower torso and just underneath I'm going to put the bicep the far bicep the far forearm and the far hand Finally, we have our close feet, actually close leg, which will be in front of our torso. So here's our torso, our lower torso, our close feet will be just under our close leg, there's the connection, and our far leg, our far leg can be back there, and our far feet can be underneath. Now, the way I organize this, um, I basically try to keep the legs away from the hands, just so we're not confused, but you'll see that the connection of the close leg and the close feet are sandwiching uh, the lower torso and the far arm. Now you can rearrange that as necessary depending on your build. So here is the basic hierarchy of your character build. Now the one thing uh, when you start getting into cutters and color overrides and if your build uh, like I said has a face group um, or sorry a face um, yeah, a face group, I would say, a face organization with the eyes, uh, the pupils, and everything. Uh, what I would recommend is to actually create another composite by hitting Control H. So in this composite, you might want to call it the head comp, and we'll set it to pass through as well. And basically, you would just connect all the items connected uh, to the head. You can even use the neck to utilize to control all that. That can be part of the head. Here's the head base and the face and the hair overlay. Actually the neck can be its own because the neck will ultimately control the head. So Whenever you have a head comp or a composite of any kind, uh, you probably want to create a master peg. So again, control P to create a master peg. And you can slide in your master peg. First, I'll name this here. Head master P. And you can slide this into um, any line by holding alt and just sliding it over. So this is our master peg and simply reconnect the controls of the peg into the master head okay and then ultimately you're gonna want your neck to control your master head peg so all you do is you take the bottom connection of the uh, 
uh, neck peg and you're going to slide underneath here. Okay, so basically the hierarchy goes from bottom up. You start with your hair overlay and then it goes, if you hit B, you can parent up and that will go to your hair overlay. And to control um, your entire head, if you hit B again, you're going to get the head master. And then if you hit B again, you're going to get the neck. Now, you can decide whether or not you want to move the neck independently by giving it another peg and then creating another peg on top. Um, but most of the case, most of the time, you're not going to move your head without moving your, or you're not going to move your neck without moving your head. So that's why I have this connected to the head. Okay, so moving on, I'm going to create another composite. This time, this composite, um, you can actually set it to lower body. Lower body comp, and we'll set it to pass through again, and I'll close that. Now, the lower body comp is basically going to be uh, everything. The lower body comp is basically going to be everything uh, attached to your lower body. So in this case, uh, we'll start with the legs. But also, we're going to need the lower body comp torso. So the lower body torso will once again be between my close legs and my far leg. Now in cases like this, um, you can have a master peg for all of these, uh, but because they're kind of so far away, um, you might want to reorganize this a little bit. So I'm just going to move over this torso and move over this hand this way. So I'll bring the torso closer. Like so. And once again I'm going to hit control P. And I'll name this lower torso master P. And holding alt you can slide it within the peg lines and connect from the bottom of the master to the top of your other pegs here. Okay. So basically the composite is an organizational tool so then you can visibly see and control, not control, see um, your groupings clearly. Uh, so we'll do another one here, control H, and we'll call this one upper body. And once again, we'll set it to a pass through. So for the upper body, um, here's the thing. We have our upper body here, but it starts to split off, as you can see, uh, between our um, far arm, uh, far arm, far uh, bicep, and far hand and our close arm and it's actually sandwiching between the lower uh, body comp so either for this particular setup um, you can assign just everything to the upper body composite like so and what you're gonna do to override the fact that now the hand the far 
bicep, the far forearm, and the far hand are in front of the lower torso, which is what we didn't want, what you'll do is you'll actually um, override the hierarchy of the left and right composite by assigning a Z depth by hitting these, this property button. And we're going to keep this permanently in the back. So under this tab here, if you go to local, this will basically set your bicep permanently in the back. Now, I like to use 0001B, but most companies or some companies will use 001. I'm fine either way. Let's just do triple digits because you don't want to shift anything back into Z depth so far that uh, things will start to parallax as you rotate it. So um, usually 0.0001B for back um, is sufficient. So do this one more time. This one for the far hand, 0.0001B. Okay, so now these three particular items will be behind everything attached to this lower body comp simply because of the Z depth, which is indicated here and here. Well, meanwhile, all these are set to zero Z depth. Okay, so that's how that hierarchy works. So just to recap, we have a character build group inside we have a multiport in, which is our doorway into the group, and a multiport out, which is the doorway out of the group. We have a master peg that controls the neck, which controls the headmaster, which controls all the symbols inside the head, which is attached to the comp, which is to the leftmost part of the composite. And then as we work our way in, we have our arms, our hands, and our upper torso connected to an upper body composite. And we have our lower torso master that controls all the lower torso composite, composite items. And that's attached to the com main composite as well. Um, just realized I forgot an upper body master peg, so I'm going to create one here, control P, and I'm going to name this upper body master peg, and alt to slide it in, and I'm just going to connect all the pieces like so. So there is your basic hierarchy of a character build. Okay, so the last thing we want to do is actually ensure everything that we have um, is set to separate mode. So we're just going to set everything in separate mode there. For a use embedded pivot, we want to basically use drawing. Uh, we can leave everything as is for the layers, and this is important. Animate using animation tools. We'll have to set it to off, and that's about it. All right, so once again, uh, you can either go into each individual uh, drawing element and ensure the drawing pivot is set to drawing layer, and to make sure you turn off your animation tools here. This basically will prevent you from uh, having issues with your deformers should you choose to use them. Uh, and it'll also uh, do the same thing that uh, I've suggested um, the reason for using the parent peg uh, is it keeps its own anchor points or pivot points. Uh, so this is kind of the best of both worlds as I discovered from uh, a few of my friends at guru just make sure that all the controls for your drawing symbols are set to uh, animation using animation tools set to off and transformation under pivot 
drawing uh, pivot set to apply embedded embedded pivot to drawing layer. Okay, that's the third option. All right, so that basically does it. Um, actually, I'll show you one more time how to set everything again. It's just this button here. Now, if you don't see it, uh, simply right click and hit node view, and it'll be the button with the three green check marks. And just make sure you set everything like this separate and drawing and off. Okay, and now you're ready to set your pivot points by using either the translate tool or the rotation tool. Simply click your item, adjust the rotation point, and then set it using the transform tool. And you're done. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.